Gandhi's very important contribution to political thought is how to defy authority. How to defy? How to launch civil disobedience movement? So how to resist authority is as given by Gandhiji became very popular all over the world. And Gandhi derived this method from religion. Okay. The idea of non-violence came from Jainism, Buddhism, Christianity. Jesus resisted authority through non-violent ways. And uh, here, Gandhi evolved certain uh, techniques. and certain philosophy. <clears throat> there are two concepts important to him. One is truth. And another is non-violence. Truth and non-violence. Gandhi defined both the truth and non-violence very broadly. Truth is not simply about not lying, but it, it, has, uh, it has a wider meaning. For example, truth is sometimes equated with uh, truth within a person, within a person, within even an enemy because of which enemy can be transformed. Truth has potential for transformation. And sometimes truth is equated as God. One wants to find the truth. One wants to find God. Like that. In the same way, non-violence also is used very widely from non-injury to love and forgiveness. Okay. The person who is resisting, who is a satyagrahi, should follow both the truth and non-violence. He is expected to be just in his demand. And he is expected to be transparent. No gimmicks, no games. He is expected to be truthful and transparent and open. Okay. And to Gandhi, 
both truth and non violence are interlinked because one of the things about truth is that you don't have monopoly over truth you have truth and the other your enemy may also have truth here we are referring to truth as a position a view point so you cannot think that only your truth is the truth and the others is falsehood so you have your point your view point and the other has his view point if one resorts to violence you try to impose your view point on the other on the other hand if you are doing non violently you are trying to convince the other and maybe in this process you see the other's view point so gandhi's resistance to authority is a kind of communication which is deeper okay gandhi wants to convince or transform and not impose his view on the other to impose is to be violent so understanding of truth requires that you do not have monopoly over truth okay and also non violence is not only uh, non injury and law it also means that you should be willing to suffer you should suffer as opposed to people who want to harm others harm others so a satyagrahi is willing to suffer rather than make enemy suffer physically so this suffering may mean accept physical violence or um fasting so gandhi thinks that resistance should not be just passive it should be active in the sense that um force of the soul he calls it soul force should be applied to change the opponent okay so this is the ideology of gandhi in offering resistance to the authority <clears throat> okay satyagrahi is like this all his actions must be transparent <clears throat> through and through diplomacy intrigue can have no place in his armory
and in its negative form ahimsa means not injuring any living being whether by body or mind but in its positive form ahimsa means love i must love my enemy as i would my wrong doing father or son you disagree with your father and so you want to change him but you don't hate him rather you love him this is the relationship between those who are who is resisting and the authority against whom the resistance is being offered and truth and non violence are connected in the application of satyagraha i discovered in the earliest stages the pursuit of truth did not admit violence being inflicted on one's opponent but that he must be weaned away from error by patience and sympathy for what appears to be truth to one man one may appear false to the other and suffering is part of resistance why is it so i have found that mere appeal to reason does not answer where prejudices are age long and based on supposed religious authority reason has to be strengthened by suffering and suffering is the law of human beings war is the law of jungle the appeal of reason is more to the head but the penetration of the heart comes from suffering it opens up the inner understanding of men okay uh, but does this mean that uh, people really uh, understand all this philosophy uh, when they are doing a movement mm, gandhi launched non cooperation movement civil disobedience movement and quit india movement but did people understand all this philosophy but before these three gandhi launched one against raul at act raul at act and this turned violent non cooperation movement also turned violent at one stage and gandhi stopped civil disobedience movement went on well quit india was spontaneous and chaotic gandhi was jailed um, but do people really understand when they are following here gandhi has something to say gandhi found that gandhi says that he hasn't imposed his understanding on everybody or anybody to others uh, this is like a uh, political weapon gandhi accepts that but in that people are frank transparent and fighting for a just cause which means truth is on their side and why non violence 
nonviolence in a pragmatic sense enables discipline of the movement nonviolence enables close control by the leadership nonviolence also enables mass participation so many took part in gandhian movements not because of they not because they were convinced by the spiritual reasons but because they found it a practical way to resist authority so look at how it worked in india ahimsa with me is a creed with me is a creed the breath of life but it is never as a creed that i placed it before india i placed it before congress as a political weapon to be employed for the solution of practical problems the nation must be disciplined to handle mass movements in a sober and methodical manner we can do no effective work unless we can pass instructions to the crowd and expect implicit obedience so non violence is an organizing principle for a mass movement non cooperation movement at one stage had to be stopped because it became a mob without a mind okay so in that historical context uh this kind of movement became very very practical compared to um terrorist movement or movements without any ideology and discipline simply crowds come on the streets and they disappear when there is violence from the state so gandhi's mobilization was historically appropriate so it worked in india though uh, we may not be able to say that it it can work in every uh, circumstance okay now what kind of political system gandhi wanted <clears throat> gandhi believes um a particular kind of an economic and political system which he calls swaraj his swaraj can be looked at in terms of uh what it shares with liberal democracy what it shares with liberal democracy and what it does not share with liberal democracy so we can examine gandhi's swaraj in terms of certain positions that various political thinkers have taken okay what does gandhi say about first liberty to gandhi liberty is very very important 
the essence of civil disobedience is about an individual resisting government and gandhi thought that it is individuals duty to resist when the government is unfair which means gandhi thinks that this liberty is essential for functioning of political system swaraj so gandhi's swaraj should protect a socrates okay it should respect individuality gandhi doesn't approve of systems that don't respect individuality he would consider them violent to gandhi individuality is very important so he opposes those socialist systems that tried to kill individuality to pursue equality gandhi would disapprove of this and next gandhi believes in freedom of speech the idea that your truth is different from others truth and you should feel free to express and gandhi is against huge inequalities extreme inequalities so on this ground he won't support western democracy because western democracies are uh, are have generated extreme inequalities so he would be critical of western democracies but at the same time he would be critical of socialist systems that took away the liberty and to gandhi equality is nothing but satisfaction of basic needs to everybody gandhi doesn't think in terms of uh more luxuries and plus equality more wealth plus equality gandhi is not for this gandhi is for equality and uh, simplicity so he thinks that simplicity and equality will go along and it is such a political system that one has to work for it is one's duty to work for such a political system now
right to disobey this is central no society can possibly be built on the denial of individual freedom it is contrary to the very nature of man just as man will not grow horns or a tail so will he not exist as a man if he has no mind of his own real swaraj will not will come not by acquisition of authority by a few but by the acquisition of capacity by all to resist authority when it is abused in other words swaraj is to be attained by educating the masses to a sense of their capacity to regulate and control authority he would his views on free speech are like the views on js mel it has always been my experience that i am always true from my point of view and often wrong from the point of view of my honest critics i know that we are both right from our respective points of view and this knowledge saves me from attributing motives to my opponents or critics i very much like the doctrine of the meaningness of reality it is this doctrine which has taught me to judge a muslim from his own standpoint and a christian from his intolerance is itself a form of violence and an obstacle to the growth of true democratic spirit okay and he gives importance to individual and as a part of it part of it he is against majoritarianism says let us not push the mandate theory to ridiculous extremes and become slaves to resolutions of majorities swaraj will be an absurdity if individuals have to surrender their judgment to majority democracy is not majoritarianism it is not majority opinion but ability to resist that majority opinion is real democracy which gandhi calls swaraj and so he opposes socialism of lenin kind socialist governments do the greatest harm by destroying individuality the individual is the one supreme consideration of the individual ceases to count what is left of society the violence of the private property is less injurious than the violence of the state if the state suppressed capitalism by violence it will be caught in the coils of violence itself and fail to develop non violence at any time i look upon an increase in the power of the state with the greatest fear because although while apparently doing good by minimizing exploitation it does the greatest harm to mankind by destroying individuality which lies at the root of all progress so gandhi doesn't want any equality destroying individuality to him equality is attainable if people have basic needs met at an economic level equality meant to gandhi is simply that everybody should have enough for his or her needs so gandhi approaches equality from simplicity point of view we need not agree but that is how he looked at things and 
Gandhi disagrees with American type democracies. Okay. Why is it so? Because of extreme inequalities. My notion of democracy is that under it, the weakest should have the same opportunity as the strongest. That can never happen except through non-balance. No country in the world today shows any but patronizing regard for the weak. The land is owned by few capitalists. These large holdings cannot be sustained except by violence. Veiled, if not open. Western democracy as it functions today is a diluted Nazism or fascism. At best, it is merely a cloak to hide the Nazi and the fascist tendencies of imperialism. So Gandhi doesn't think that separation of powers and regular elections and fundamental rights are enough for Swaraj. You should not have these inequalities. Swaraj is a system where the weakest and the strongest have the same opportunity. Now, Gandhi has some very important uh, mm, critical views against modern civilization itself, against modern civilization. Uh, as a critic of modern civilization, he offers a model which is decentralized model. Decentralized with simplicity. Okay. And uh, it is here, Gandhi offers one uh, Gandhi offers political system based on village. In Gandhi's Swaraj, Village is very, very important. So he considers political system in terms of villages, not in terms of a strong state. So Gandhi's ideal is of village republics. Uh, there are two aspects here. Number one, um, village is independent politically or more independent than what it is. Now it is less uh, controlled by the state because Gandhi believes in decentralized model. That is one. And second thing is, Gandhi looks at economy also in a decentralized way. So he believes in political decentralization as well as economic decentralization. He calls this self-sufficient, self-sufficient economy, sufficient. Okay. 
and uh, unlike uh, other views of gandhi villages republic met with very serious and i believe justifiable criticism what are the problems number 1 gandhi thinks village can be democratic or an example of democracy in this aspect gandhi is ignoring caste is a very serious issue so that is why ambedkar opposed gandhi's views on village to ambedkar village is den of casteism so there are extreme inequalities in a village untouchables so how can there be democracy here and what is gandhi's solution to this hierarchy so with these inequalities how can there be uh, democracy so if village is left to itself it is left to domination by the upper caste that is a problem next thing is gandhi believes in decentralized production village level production and village level dis- distribution what happens if it is decentralized production and decentralized distribution uh, it leads to very primitive economy which is not making use of trade we know from economist david ricardo trade helps in his theory of comparative advantage he showed how trade helps any entity so prosperity is linked to trade but gandhi ignores that and goes for self sufficiency of a village which leads which will lead to very primitive economic system this also is a very serious limitation but ignoring ambedkar as well as ricardo gandhi thinks in terms of village republic and uh, he believes in terms of um simple economy as such that is he is opposed to mechanization he is opposed to large machinery because he thinks that large machinery displaces labor when there is already huge labor in the village so he goes for a simple technology which will give employment to people but there can be higher technology and trade which can give employment to villages gandhi doesn't pursue that solution oh. so to the gandhi democracy cannot be worked by 20 men sitting at the center it has to be worked it has to be worked from below by the people of every village and then he says khadi is the only true economic proposition in terms of the millions of villages 
until such a time, if ever, when a better system of supplying work and adequate wages for every able-bodied person above the age of 16, male or female, is found for his field, cottage, or even factory in every village of India. And mechanization is an evil when there are more hands than required for the work, as in the case in India. And the advocacy of simple technology and decentralized village will make him an opponent of industrialism and centralized planning, which Nehru stood for. An intelligent plan will find the cottage method fit into the scheme for our country. Any planning in our country that ignores the absorption of labor wealth will be misplaced. The centralized method of production, whatever may be its capacity to produce, is incapable of finding employment for as large a number of persons as we have to provide for. Therefore, it stands condemned in this country. No amount of socialism can eradicate evils inherent in industrialism. So Gandhi is in general against uh, mm, creation of uh, more and more goods. Okay. And uh, in general against huge industries like this. But from a completely different argument like climate change, uh, Gandhi's these views are coming out to be more relevant now. Climate change. So Gandhi's views against more and more production are relevant now. But we can question that uh, one need not produce more goods, but whatever the production need not be decentralized. So climate change uh, need not affect theory of trade, though theory of trade will make certain, uh, climate change will make trade in certain goods uh, environmentally damaging and so they would be stopped. So one has to work out Gandhi's views in terms of climate change. But on the whole, there is a very, very uh, serious justification for limiting production and so limiting consumption um, to save environment. Okay. This has to be worked out in the context of advantage that trade can give and advantage that high technologies like information technology can give. So, but Gandhi on the whole seemed to be biased against technology, industry, and uh, even higher education, which is expected to give these things. So Gandhi's views need to be re-examined in the context of climate change. To what extent Gandhi's views are useful and where they are not useful. 